welcome to the 17th episode of Renaissance Weekly. So glad you could join us. For those who don't know, Renaissance Club is it's a non-profit rehabilitation clubhouse for adults with mental illness. We are co-anchors. I'm Michael Closey. It's Michael Denunzio. Hello, Mike. What do we have on the show today? I'm glad you asked. Today on the show, we have another recipe corner with Kathy Closey and another poetry corner with Ashley Cormier, a sports update, and a movie review. But first, we've got a weather report from our very own weatherman, Walter Villador. Walter, let's go with the weather. Thanks, Mike. This week's forecast is Monday, partly cloudy, high of 47, low of 32. Tuesday, mostly sunny, high of 52, low of 24. Wednesday, mostly sunny, high of 31, low of 10. Thursday, sunny, high of 32, low of 16. Friday, mostly cloudy, high of 41, low of 31. Now back to you, Mike. Thank you, Walter. Today is Won't You Be My Neighbor Day. Any day can be a beautiful day in the neighborhood, and Won't You Be My Neighbor Day is no exception. Won't You Be My Neighbor Day is a day to remember and honor Fred Rogers, that iconic children's television presenter of Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. His show reached its heyday in popularity in, back in the 1970s and the 80s, and repeats, repeats can still be seen today. Gentle, soft-spoken Mr. Rogers was a mainstay for preschoolers and their parents, teaching them that respect to those around you and good attitude were just as important as learning your colors and letters. Why not don a 70s-style sweater today and speak softly to your partner? Be mindful of how you can show kindness and patience in explaining this simple concept to a child, or perhaps even to a co work colleague. After all, it's a beautiful day for a neighbor, and for being neighborly. Hey, Fred, how are you doing today? I don't know, I'm King. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I just remember the, the puppets. And yeah, <laughs> that was a great show. Huh? Yeah, it was. He was just surely missed. He was one of the, the main streams of kids cartooning. Cartooning? Cartoon, whatever well, you want to call it. Programming. Programming. Today is also World Storytelling Day. Once upon a time, a long time ago, well actually back in the 1990s in Sweden, a storytelling day was held. Uh, the ethos behind this event caught on around the globe and now we celebrate World S Storytelling Day on an international level. The aim of World T Storytelling Day is to celebrate the art of oral st storytelling which as many people as possible around the world telling and listening to stories in their own language on the same day. People taking part can link up with others around the globe who are contributing, making a truly international festival that creates new friends and promotes positive understanding of culture around the world. So go on, sit down with your friends and loved ones and join the United Nations of Storytellers on this day of celebration, culture folk. Why not spin a yarn and pass your story around to the next generation? A long nice. time ago in a galaxy far, far away. Wait, <laughs> that's nope, somebody else's. That's not, that's not legal. <laughs> <coughs> Today is also uh, March 20th. Wow, we're getting there. It's March 20th, folks. And um, if you celebrate a birthday today, you celebrate it with the likes of Carl Reiner. American actor, director, producer, and screenwriter, father of Rob Reiner. He turns 95 today. Wow. Louis Laurie, author of the Newbery Award winning book, The Giver, turns 80. I saw that. The movie they made of it recently is pretty good. Yeah. John D. Lancey? I say his name right? John D. Lancey? Yeah, John D. Lancey. John D. Lancey. Best known as Q in the Star Trek franchise, as well as Discord in My Little Pony. He, uh, friendship is magic. He turns 69. Q is the best character on Star Trek. Um, ever. Most definitely. Yeah, he was great. Better than Picard, I'm sorry. <laughs> I love you, Picard, but he was better. Bobby O'Rourke, legendary NHL defenseman who spent 10 seasons with the Boston Bruins. He turned 69 today, folks. Louis Sacker, acclaimed children's author of Sideways Stories from Way School, Wayside School book series, as well as Holes, turned 63. You ever see that movie? I saw Holes with... Um, Sasha, not Sasha, no. Shia LaBeouf, right? Yeah, Shia LaBeouf, yeah, Shia LaBeouf. Yeah, yeah. Pretty young. yeah, pretty young Shia LaBeouf, yeah, no, not, not so good now, but, <laughs> no. but yeah, he was, that was good, Shigori Weaver too. Oh yeah. I think, yeah, hmm. yeah. Spike Lee, famous director of such films as Malcolm X and Dude the Right Thing, turned 60, wow, Spike. Um, Stephen Borden, best known as w, uh, wrestler Sting, uh, who's best known for his WCW days and uh, most recently WWE, turns 58. Kathy Ireland, kind of funny, <laughs> American model, actress, and best known for appearing in 13 consecutive Sports Illustrated swimsuits, turns 54 today. I watched The Simpsons last night, and they had that the joke about they were going to Ireland, and it's like 
his West Island and then his Kathy Island and it's <laughs> like Kathy Island and a bikini and uh, she's waving see, to the Seems more like a family guy joke, but yeah. uh, I remember they did go to Ireland and so, saw the show, so. Star of Sesame Street, Big Bird, once again turns six, but he would be 48 if he was aged like the rest of us. Chester Bennington, lead uh, vocalist of Linkin Park, turns 41. Um, I can't even pronounce that name, folks. Excuse Freema me. Agamemnon. Freema Agamemnon, best known as Martha Jones in the Doctor Who, uh, Who series, turns 38. Christy Carlson Romano, best known as her role as Re Ren Stevens and Even Steven, as well as the voice of Kim Possible, turns 31. What? That'd be 33, folks. Mm -hmm. Baron Trump, the youngest of son of President Donald J. Trump, turns 11. We have Skinner, American psychologist, as well as author as well of the namesake Principal Skinner of The Simpsons. Who died yeah, they, in they, named, they named the character after him. Oh, interesting. I did not know that. Who died in 1990. Would have been 113 today. Mm -hmm. And finally, kind of funny, not funny, Fred Rogers, best known as Mr. Rogers on Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood, who died on uh, in 2003. Would have been 89 today. So that's probably why it's wouldn't you be my neighbor yeah. today. today it's it's celebrating exactly his birthday, birthday today. Um, moving on to this thing's uh, on the state in history with Mike. Thank you, Michael. Uh, today on History, in 1760, the Great Boston Fire of 1760 destroys 349 buildings. Hmm. In 1816, the U.S. Supreme Court affirms its right to review state court decisions. In 1852, Harriet Beecher Stowe's Uncle Tom's Cabin is published in Boston. In 1868, Jesse James Gang robs a bank in Russellville, Kentucky of $14,000. That was a lot of money considering it was 1868 there. Yeah. Uh, in 1885, John... Maltzeliger, I'm not sure if that's correctly pronounced, but of Suriname, patents the shoelacing machine. Hmm. In 1915, Albert Einstein publishes his general theory of relativity. E equals mc squared. That was an answer on our categories yesterday. <laughs> uh, in 1951, in uh, Fujiyoshida, a city located in Yamanashi Prefecture, Japan, is the center of the Japanese mainland of Honshu, is founded. 1952, the United States Senate ratifies a peace treaty with Japan. And also in 1952, the final ratification of peace treaty was... Oh, yeah. Uh, I should do that one over again. Uh, forgot to fix that one. Uh, the United States Senate... Uh, 1952... Yeah, we should try that again. In 1952, the United States Senate ratifies a peace treaty with Japan, restoring the sovereignty to Japan from the United States Senate. 1954, the first newspaper vending machine used, is used in Columbia, Pennsylvania. Hmm. 1963, the first pop art exhibition is held in New York City. Pop art. <laughs> 1965, civil, right, wo civil and women's rights activist Dorothy Height has her first column published in the weekly African-American newspaper called the New York Amsterdam News. In 1985, Libby Riddles becomes the first woman to win the 1,135-mile Iditarod Trail sled dog race. Oh. Usual number for miles. That uh, must be significant. Mm -hmm. um, and also in 1985, Canadian paraplegic athlete and humanitarian Rick Hansen begins circumnavigating the globe in a wheelchair in the name of spinal cord injury medical research. Wow. It's pretty amazing, huh? Yeah. Uh, in 1986, New York City passes its first lesbian and gay rights legislation. In 1987, the Food and Drug Administration approves the anti-AIDS drug AZT. 1991, the court awards Peggy Lee $3 million in a lawsuit against Disney for usage of her voice when releasing The Lady and the Tramp on home video, despite her contract from 1955 saying they wouldn't. Hmm. It was a very landmark uh, court case there. Uh, in 2015, a solar eclipse, uh, equinox, and a supermoon all occur on the same day. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> I kind of wonder uh, when, if uh, all that will ever happen again, huh? Yeah, probably not. And in 2016, Barack Obama becomes the first U.S. president to visit Cuba since 1928, arriving for a two-day tour. Wow. There's another way of the other states in history, Mike. Thanks. You're welcome. You know, Mike, here at the Renaissance Club, we do a lot of work. We also combine work with pleasure, which is where our social events come into play. Last week, we played categories, and we had our St. Patrick's Day lunch, as well as a St. Patrick's Day charades. It is now time for Kathy Kosti with her recipe corner. Kathy? Hello, everyone. 
I'm going to talk about chocolate today. Three delicious recipes. First we have chocolate waffles. One cup of whole flour, one cup of enriched flour, one third cup of cocoa, and one third cup sugar. Then you have for the wet ingredients, one egg, one cup of plain non-fat or regular yogurt, and one teaspoon of vanilla extract. And of course you need a waffle iron. Okay, next is chocolate truffles. We have six dry figs, a few pieces of crystallized ginger, make sure they're a good size, one tablespoon of honey, and then process in your processor. Four balls and put on a tray, melt in a double boiler dark chocolate, roll the truffles in melted chocolate, and then chill and serve. Next is the chocolate mocha smoothie. Two cups of low or non-fat milk, two, two teaspoons of espresso powder, two teaspoons of cocoa powder, two frozen bananas cut, and two, one cup of ice and put it into your blender. And really make sure you blend it well. Mm -mm, what a nice summer treat. Well, thank you. This has been Recipe Corner. Now oh, back to the studio. Those sound like a really good recipes. I'm going to have to try them. Now it's time for a Poetry Corner with Ashley Cormier. Ashley? One. Hi, welcome to the Poetry Corner with Ashley. Today I have two original poems to share with you. One was submitted to us by Kathy Colosi, and another one is one I've um, written myself. We'll start off with Kathy's first. It's called The Boundaries. Frustrations abound, must not participate loud sound. We act out, then turn about, and project our burden. People unknowing of the cross we bear our heart when we blurt, stop, observe, proceed mindfully. Very good poem, Kathy. Thank you for submitting. Now we have one by me. Just everything about him is amazing, and the way he makes her laugh makes her very happy and her heart fill with endless amounts of love. So much love in her heart, and she has the same sort of feelings for him. He has the key to unlock and let love into her heart. Everlasting love and laughter, everlasting hope and peace, letting them be together over time and space, variety of things, no emptiness for both of them. Always loving each other, long lasting love. Would you ever try to stop love and cause pain? You better think again. Separating them would not end well. That was an original written by me. I wrote that maybe two weeks ago. But before we go back to the studio with Mike and Mike, if you have any poems you would like to submit for me to read or anything in general you would like to see um, spoken to on Renaissance Weekly, feel free to send them to myself or one of the staff members here at the club. Thank you, and now back to you guys in the studio. Now time for a sports update. We don't know with who. We'll figure it out. Today is March 20th. The Celtics lost a heartbreak against the Philadelphia 76ers last night. Isaiah De Thomas did not play. Tonight, they face the Washington Wizards in a battle for the second seed. The Celtics are 44 and 26, and the Washington Wizards are 42 and 27. Only a game and a half difference between the two teams. Let's hope the Celtics can pull off a out of victory. Also, the Boston Bruins play the Toronto Maple Leafs tonight. Toronto is still in the playoff hunt, and the Boston Bruins have been playing well since the firing of Coach Julian. The Bruins are 38, 27, and 6, while the Toronto Maple Leafs are 32, 23, and 15. Let's hope the Bruins can continue to play well and make it to the playoffs this year. In other sports, the Boston Red Sox are right around the corner, and their opening day is April 3rd against the Pittsburgh Pirates. The game will start officially at 2.05. And finally, in two other sports, the NCAA tournament, there have been a lot of upsets and reached the Sweet 16 recently. Number one, Villanova was defeated by Wisconsin. In other sports news, the United States will play the semifinals in the World Baseball Classic uh, against Puerto Rico, I believe. Thank you and have a good day. Some good sports updates there. Go home team. Except for the Bruins. Oh. Yeah, I'm, I'm not a Bruins fan. 
So, anyways, so Mike, what do you call an alligator with a vest? I don't know, Mike. What do you call an alligator with a vest? An investigator. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's all the time we have for today. I'm Michael Closey. And I'm Michael Nunzio. Thanks for joining us once again here at Renaissance Weekly. Remember, folks, life, life always, always offers, offers you a second, second chance. chance. It's called Call tomorrow. tomorrow. Sprite and Lucky Charms. They're magically delicious. It's like already. It's already recording this. Sprite too. Wow, thanks for ruining that movie for me, Mike. <laughs> you did that just because I did that to you. Let's try that again, folks. Wow, thanks for ruining that movie for me, Mike. You're welcome.